hi everyone. So today's video is going to be a little bit of an advice video about how to start and grow a YouTube channel, a specifically a beauty YouTube channel in the right way. I always feel that if I knew what I know now, you know, back when I started my channel, I could have had uh, a lot more success early on before, you know, um, there became so much competition on YouTube because it's just that it is what it is. There's much more competition um, with lots of beauty gurus these days. So, you know, than there was back in 2010 when I started doing videos. Um, so I thought I would share my tips with you guys. Just what I've learned over the years, um, some best practices, I guess, in order to start and grow a beauty channel. So I don't exactly have, you know, 1 million subscribers. So you might be thinking, like, what do you know about growing a YouTube channel? Your channel is small and you've been doing this for six years. Like, what's wrong with you? So, you know, I didn't really make my channel a priority and I didn't really upload consistently until, like, March... 2016 and it is now January 2017 so it's not been a year um I started then doing videos once a week always no matter what um and before you know when I first started I was doing videos like once a month and then I would take a break for two months or whatever and I just wasn't really posting um it wasn't my priority I mean I guess I thought it was but I just you know didn't feel like I had the time or whatever um, but something sparked in my head last year and I really wanted to make my channel my priority and do it right. So since then I've been uploading every week, usually around Fridays and Saturdays. Um, so as far as my advice goes, the first thing I'll say is, um, you know, I wish that I had invested in good equipment. Um, and that's something that you definitely should do. When I first started my videos, I was using my little webcam that I had on my family's computer. It was like 20 bucks, and it was just very grainy and awful. Mind you, I don't think anybody was doing like super amazing lighting and HD like beauty videos back then. I feel like everyone's beginning videos are grainy and horrible quality. But if you're going to make a YouTube channel, make sure that you have good um, equipment, aka a good camera and good lighting. I have the Sony A5100 as my camera. Um, before that, I just had some regular, you know, old Nikon digital camera. You Today, cameras are, are better than they were before, that you don't have to spend $600 to get a good camera. You can spend $200 and still get a really great HD camera. Um, you know, you don't have to, to worry about spending massive amounts of money because the difference between... A $200 camera and a $600 camera might be a lot smaller than you think. Um, and you can definitely still get away with having one that's a little bit less expensive and still have great quality HD videos. And then lighting. So lighting is something that I didn't invest in until literally, what, September I think I got my lighting. I have a Diva ring light and I have two softbox lights. So the ring light is right in front and the camera is on it. And then on each side I have a softbox light. I don't think my lighting now is even, you know, perfect, but it's way better than it was. That's one thing that a lot of people would complain about is that my lighting was very yellow. Um, you know, there I just didn't have any lighting. I was just using my vanity, which those lights are yellow. And you want to get lights that are white um, so that they're clear and they don't, you know, change the colors of anything. And everyone constantly was telling me, your foundation's too dark, your foundation's too yellow. I'm like, no, it's just my lighting. Um, and, you know, looking back, I don't know why it took me so long to get it. I guess I just didn't feel like spending the money because it was expensive. Um, but if you're going to start with one thing, I, I would just do the ring light. You don't necessarily need the softbox lights um, if you don't have the money, but you do want to invest in some sort of, you know, nice, decent lighting um, because, you know, when you're making beauty videos and makeup videos, you really want everything to be clear um, and the colors to be correct. Now, I do have a backdrop, too, that is fairly new that I got around the same time as my lighting, and I just put up, like, different cloths. I don't think that's 100% necessary, especially when you're first getting started. Um, I don't think that's going to make or break your channel, but, you know, if you want, I will link where I got this um, in the description box. It's just a piece of, you know, it's like pieces of plastic stuck together, whatever. It's a backdrop, and then cloth is just... Um, 
clipped to it so that's all that really is now the two most important things about your channel besides your equipment like your equipment is important but what's gonna get you to have a successful YouTube channel is your content um, and you know your personality and the way that you are on camera and how you relate to your audience so as far as your content goes I've in the recent years been kind of learning um, what is successful on my smaller channel and what is not as successful when you're first starting a channel so you may see you know the huge youtubers they could literally put a video out on anything like they could say me counting grains of sand at the beach and they could go one two three and literally count sand all day long and that would get four million views that being said you kind of have to make sure that when you're first starting a channel you do seo friendly um topics seo search engine optimization so aka topics that people are going to type in that are trending that people are going to be searching for because people don't know you yet they don't know your channel they don't know your name so you need to be found basically and the way you're going to get found and get subscribers interested in you and your content is putting out first you know content that people are searching for how do you do this at this point i've kind of just learned like what works and what doesn't for me like if i do a a um january favorites video and i show all my favorite products whatever and you know that's like a big thing that a lot of youtubers do they do favorite videos and they seem really popular for me that isn't going to gain as many views as if i do a makeup tutorial for new year's eve or a video like this i'm hoping because this is the type of thing that not only my subscribers may want to see, but people are going to be searching, you know, how do I, you know, build a successful YouTube channel. So that's why I'm doing this video basically so that people will search for this topic, find my channel, hopefully like me and then hopefully subscribe. You don't want to start out with generic videos like what's in my purse um, that are so specific to you. You want to do something like a makeup tutorial or just anything trendy like my most popular video is how to get the exact Kylie Jenner lip and I did that at the time when Kylie Jenner had not yet admitted to her lip injections and she would wear that really pretty mauve color um, and I went out and hunted down a lipstick color combination that I thought was spot on to you know the color the mysterious color she had been wearing that everyone was trying to figure out so at that time that was a hugely trending topic and that video blew up and I look like crap in that video I don't even look cute I didn't realize it would even get that much exposure but it did because anything with the Kardashians and Kylie Jenner or whatever was and is still very trendy another thing that is gonna play into it is going to be your personality um, I know that some youtubers you know popular and unpopular whatever share more of their life or they're more realistic um, and some are others are more private you kind of have to just find what works for you and kind of um, be yourself on camera you don't want to be fake because people can definitely pick up on that um, but you don't want to be somebody that you're not you see what's popular now you know Jeffree Star and Manny and whatever and you know they can be very like I don't know I don't want to say like vault not Manny but Jeffree can be kind of like I guess vulgar or like out there or whatever and that's you know great and that's him um but if that's not you like don't pretend to be that way because it's just gonna come off fake um, but at the same time, you don't want to be too shy. You do want to let some of your personality kind of shine and, and show off. And you want to basically build a relationship with your subscribers. You know, they're here for your content, but they're also here for you. And that's why the big, um, you know, YouTubers can make videos about picking up grains of sand and counting them and get 4 million views. Because people, you know, once the content has, you know, sucked your subscribers in, then they now want to kind of follow you and your life and see what you're doing and what's happening you just kind of want to act as though you're you know building a relationship with your subscribers and you know you want to be friends with them and, and you want them to wonder what you're doing and have seem like you have an interesting enough life um for them to want to kind of follow along with you and watch things that you know don't have good seo optimization like 
your vlogs and you walking your dog and whatever. So you have to first kind of uh, build the content and I don't want to say suck them in because it sounds bad, but you know, suck them in. And then once you have that base of subscribers, then they'll want to see kind of, you know, those other videos that nobody's really searching for, but they specifically want to see them from you because they like your personality. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to make money on YouTube. Nobody ever talks about it, um, but how you're going to make money is by becoming a YouTube partner and then monetizing your videos, meaning you'll have ads play in front of them. Um, and I'm not going to go into all that. You can Google it and figure it out. I had to figure that out when I was like 16 and I was so confused, but I figured it out. It's not hard. And that's how you're going to make money from your videos. But <laughs> don't go and quit your day job just yet. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of views um, to gain, you know, big revenue on YouTube for you. Um, for somebody that, you know, like me, I have 14,000 subscribers at the moment. What do I get? Like 20,000 views a month, something like that. I could, I would be homeless if, if this was my full-time job. I would be on the streets starving and homeless. So just like let that sink in. Um, so yeah, obviously I don't do this for, for the money, but you know, only the people that have like millions of subscribers and you know 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 plus views are the ones that are really going to be able to make this year their career. So don't start it for the money because it's not going to be, you know, great until you take off, you know, if and when you do. Another thing that people often don't talk about um is sponsorships and brand ambassador stuff. Everybody has a coupon code and everyone's doing sponsored videos. And that's totally cool. Like I have done sponsored videos, um, you know, have had discount codes occasionally. Like because I'm small, I don't get that many offers. But also because I've learned from over the years, I don't accept a lot of offers um, just because it's not always worth it to me. And I'm not going to, you know, clog up my channel with bullshit advertising for you guys that I, you know, don't feel passionate about or I feel like their product sucks or I feel like they didn't even offer me a good deal or whatever. Um, so my advice there is once you start getting sponsorships, you might, you know, get excited and you want to do every single one that comes your way because you're not used to being offered free products or money for a video or whatever. But just try to keep in mind, like I said, people can really see through you know, fakeness and when you're being overly like commercialized and advertisey or whatever, it's just so obvious and it's just such a turn off. Like it just, I hate that. If I'm seeing somebody, um, you know, advertise a product and if they're really pushing for it, you know, some of the bigger ones, bigger YouTube, YouTubers will get deals with like Crest toothpaste or whatever. If Crest toothpaste, like a huge company like that comes along and you know, we all know Crest, <laughs> we all know Crest is, is great toothpaste, like whatever. It's not like they're selling you some scammy thing. If they came along to me and wanted me to do a video for them, I would do it. So <laughs> there's that and it's totally fine to get your money and, and do something big and be proud to work with a brand. But if every, you know, tiny little stupid company or every promotion is coming your way and you're doing you know, a video for every single one, it just starts to become really forced and just not good. And your subscribers are going to know that it's a sponsored video and they're going to be mad at you. Um, and a lot of them won't understand that you're just trying to make money. So you kind of have to find that balance between, you know, doing videos, you know, f from your heart or that you're passionate about versus just doing bullshit sponsored content that you don't really care about. And another thing is when you post so this is something that I've learned, especially being, again, a small YouTuber, um, you know, when I keep using Manny, MUA, whatever, he's like huge. He could post a video at 2 a.m. on a Tuesday and it'll still get 10 million views because he's got loyal, loyal, loyal fans in huge numbers. And it's just the way it is. Me, if I post a video at 2 a.m., that video is going to do really shitty because Nobody's online at that time. Nobody's looking for it. It's just not a good day. It's not a good time. So you really want to make sure you're um, optimizing the times that you post. If you'll notice, nobody has probably noticed this, or maybe you have. 
I post on the weekends. So I post usually either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, at specific times too, you can Google this shit. Like you can look up the best time to post a video. So if it's on a Friday, I'll post around like five o'clock, four o'clock, whatever, Saturday, same thing. If it's on a Sunday, I do it a little bit earlier in the afternoon. Um, you can also schedule uploads so you don't have to, you know, sit there and, and have it go live right there. You can upload it when you have time and then make a schedule for when it will actually be uploaded live to YouTube. So another thing is that you really want to be consistent. Consistency is huge. If you are unable to do a video, you know, at least three times a month, don't start your channel yet or, or you know, really commit to being able to do it three times a month. I do videos once a week. Um, and in the beginning, I was stupid to, you know, take six months off from YouTube or whatever. That's when people lose interest in you and stop watching, you know, looking for you in their subscription feed. They forget about you. They move on. So you want to be really consistent. That's the best way you're going to get um, subscribers and views and a real following of loyal subscribers who are actually interested in you. So I think that's all I really have for you guys. And no, I just rambled on forever, but I truly feel like I've learned a lot um, in the years that I've done YouTube. And if I had all this knowledge six years ago, you better believe I would have like 5 million subscribers by now because, you know, I would have been smart as shit and there was nobody around on YouTube in 2010. That's when it like really took off. But whatever, I'm not bitter. Um, I love doing YouTube. It's just one of the things that I really value. I love, um, you know, interacting with my subscribers when I get comments from you guys. It's the best. So if you are starting your own YouTube channel, good luck to you. And, you know, leave in the comments if you have any tips for anybody else that's starting a channel, if there's anything that you think of that I have not. If you have not entered my giveaway, I will link that in the description box. This is the first week that it's been there. It will be open for two more weeks. Um, I'm giving away two Sephora gift cards. So that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'm always happy to answer you guys. I am out the door and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.